Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop. Today, I'm gonna do a video on the camera I use in my laser. So as you've seen, right over here, I did a laser video about my Chinese laser. So I bought this laser that has the Ruida controller because it is compatible with the software Lightburn. If you haven't used that, check that out. I think it's the best software out there for lasers at this point and it's made in the United States and support is fantastic. So one of the great features of that is you can add a camera, you put a physical camera and then the software will show what you're doing and you can set it up and align your jobs. So a lot of times when you're lasering, you end up with a lot of scrap because you cut out weird shapes and such and you can't really pinpoint where you're going. But with a camera, you can pinpoint exactly where it's going because you can align it and move your design right to all of that space. So you no longer have scrap, or all your scrap is actually usable. I'm saving probably 50% of what I would have thrown out before is now completely usable. So it's really paying for itself in the long run. The camera was $80. I bought the 140 degree fisheye lens for my laser. Uh, I'll lift it up and show you where I installed it. So you would think you would put it down here and get real close. You actually want to put it up high so it can see the whole bed. So my camera is right up here in the lid of the enclosure. And when the lid is up, I will go over the software and I'll show you that here in a little bit. I'll work through the whole software setting it up and uh, get a view of the entire bed, the env entire cutting area, position, uh, the wood however I want it and then go over to the system and position the vectors or picture or whatever right where I need it to be. So if you end up buying the Lightburn camera, you're going to get the camera that's just on a motherboard and exposed and then it's attached to a USB cord that plugs into any computer. You don't directly connect it to the laser at all. It just, I'm just running the wire through the laser and over to my computer. The laser doesn't come with a case. I went on to the Lightburn software support site and a bunch of people have uploaded um, STL files for 3D printers or people have just glued it direct or made something out of wood. I 3D printed one and if you can't find a file and have access to a 3D printer and you want to purchase one from someone who can make one, I'll put one on my Etsy. I'll leave a link in the description. You can purchase that. That way you can have a case for it. But I just hot glued the case up there, ran the wire down through the side and now the laser is focused directly on the bed. It does allow you, the case that I printed, it does allow you to twist it so you can angle it just perfect. The tip of the lens has an adjustable ring where you can set the focus, and then uh, once you focus it, you run it over on the software and calibrate it. So if you're looking for the camera, you'll notice they give a bunch of different degree fisheye lenses, and they give you, in the description, they'll give you a little bit of math to do to try to figure out what fisheye lens degree you need for your bed. I'm going to give you the dimensions of mine and the distance so you can see what I have and maybe that'll give you a bit more informed decision. So I have a 700 by 500 millimeter bed and the camera from mine to the bed is 600 and about 60 millimeters from the tip of the camera to my focal point on the bed. So that should assist in you being able to figure out for your bed. It's different for every laser, but that's what I'm using. So let's go over to the software. I'll show you how to calibrate it, align it, and get it all set up and cut something with the laser. And if this doesn't make you want to get a camera, I don't know what will because it is saving me time and money and it is just an awesome feature. So let's check it out. With Lightburn open, go to Tools, Calibrate Camera Lens. Then you're going to select your Lightburn camera and hit Next. So I'm going to let kind of the video play in the background of what I'm doing so watch it I have somebody helping me it made it a whole lot easier while I was working the computer they worked the hand so what you're trying to do is use this printed out calibration cube that is I printed out on a piece of paper and it's gonna calibrate it for you so you can see from the beginning it wasn't really liking our positioning so we threw it down on the bed and that was the first time we got a good score. The camera screen right there looks a little odd, but that is immaterial. If it comes across with a good score, you're doing good. 
doesn't matter if it shows an actual good picture or not. Um, you can see at the top middle, like the example picture on this edition of Lightburn, is showing you different places to put it around. But since I'm aiming directly at the board from the top down and not at an angle like their camera is, uh, I didn't really follow that direction. Imagine your the bed is divided up into nine squares and uh, three rows across the top, three rows across the middle, and three rows across the bottom. You're wanting to put that grid into each square. And you can see I moved it from the top middle square. Now I'm at the bottom middle square. And now we're at the bottom left. We want to take nine different pictures that come out with a good score and in each one of those squares. So we're moving it out around and as you are moving it to the corners you're gonna to have to tilt the piece of paper towards the camera so you can kinda of see on the top left their little example you're, you're, you're doing a fisheye lens so if you're on the right side you're gonna to have to tilt the right side of the piece of paper up so the fisheye lens is looking at it at a flat angle so that will help assist in uh, getting good scores so we finished getting our good scores and now we're putting a piece of cardboard down as big as the bed you can go that's what I used uh, you can use wood you can use cardboard you can use paper but a cardboard was readily available in my shop so that's what I chose to use now we're on the next page of the alignment wizard the top part the material thickness will only matter if you have autofocus I don't so it doesn't matter um, you're going to be changing your cut power and um, your uh, other values per your laser. You can see what I'm using, and it's a 60-watt laser. And then it'll give you the grid behind it, the 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4 are a little odd because the numbers give you this offset, and it looks funky, but it doesn't really matter. That's... Uh, apparently that's the way it is in the design. So you can see the initial scale is 200 by 200 and I'm using a, as big as I can go in the bed which is 500 by 500. I have a 700 by 500 but it's doing a square. So 500 by 500 we do some math and that comes out to 252 for my scale. That's as big as I can go in my bed. So once I do that and I click frame and I know that it goes around the square like I want it to and I get the cut speed and cut power perfect for the material I'm using. I had to figure that out for, for cardboard because I've never done that before. But uh, and you can see I changed the stock, um, the scale size to 230. After I did frame, it was a little out. And you can see the numbers moved in. So once we're finished with that, we hit next. We can capture the image we just did. You can see it's got a weird top and a weird bottom, but that's okay. It's burned onto my cardboard, so we're zooming in with the mouse wheel and moving it around. And we're selecting the very middle of each one of these circles where the intersect is. We'll double click and we'll get a crosshair. And it's really important you get as close as you can down to the pixel for the preciseness of this. Once you do this, it will calibrate exactly where everything lines up and flatten the fish out, fish eye out. So now we've calibrated and we're done. We're going to go over to the camera and click Update Overlay. And you can see it looks like a flat square on the back of the bed. And we can zoom in here. And there's a circle. So we're going to do a test cut. And I decided to make a circle on the inside. So now we're just loading up the cutting engraving. And we're hitting Start and it's engraving now. You can actually hit um, the camera so you can see what it's doing. And I'm gonna move it over so I get that camera control and you can watch what it just did. It just did that circle in the center. And we'll update overlay and you can see how incredibly precise that worked out. The, it's, the background picture has updated and the circle's in the center. All right, guys, I hope that helped you figure out how to set up your camera and how what good a camera does. I think it's a really worthwhile investment. The camera's about 80 bucks from Lightburn. See if you can find yourself a USB camera around the house and if it works out as well. I went straight from Lightburn because I want that high resolution and I want the uh, 
uh, precision that it will give you. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. Give me a comment. If you have any questions or you want to say I did something wrong, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Hit that subscribe so you know when I do more tips and tricks and more videos about lasers, CNC, DIY, woodworking, all things in the shop. And we'll see you next time. Happy cutting.